Chapter 18. Punishment. 1. Restitution. Exodus 22, 1 following. Depending on the value of whatever is stolen, destroyed or damaged, restitution could be from death to fivefold. Thus, because oxen were beasts of burden and required much training, and their meat and hide value, their restitution was fivefold. Sheep, whose wool and meat had value, as do their reproductive capacity, required fourfold restitution. Restitution began with a restoration of what was stolen, plus an equivalent amount. 2. In certain offences it was restoration plus 20%. This applies to cases where something rightly belonging to God was retained or used by someone in ignorance. Leviticus 5.16 This also applied to cases where someone took advantage of a neighbour. Restoration plus 20%. Leviticus 6.1-7. Numbers 5.7 3. The law could not be taken into one's own hands. Leviticus 19.18 We are not God. We have a duty to God to obey his law and to love our neighbour, which means keeping the law in all our dealings with him, because love does not wrong a neighbour, but observes God's law in dealing with him, for love is the fulfilment, that is, the putting in force of the law. Romans 13.10 4. In minor offences not requiring restitution, where some kind of punishment is deemed necessary, corporal punishment is required. Deuteronomy 25, 1-3 If it be a beating or a whipping, no more than 40 stripes can be given. The offender is not to be degraded, but simply chastised. This law was on the books in many American states well into this century, and earlier commonly applied. 5. Imprisonment Leviticus 24, 12 Numbers 15, 34 Imprisonment was temporary, pending a trial, it was not a means of punishment. After trial, it could be death, restitution, or corporal punishment. 6. The extent of punishment. Leviticus 19, Deuteronomy 24, 16. Everyone shall be punished for his own sins. The fathers cannot be punished for their children's sins, nor children for their fathers. If there is complicity in a family member's sin, then there is guilt, but not otherwise. 7. No ransom or fine is permitted in cases of murder. Numbers 35, 30 and 31. The death penalty is mandatory in murder cases. In Exodus 21, 28, where we have an ox fatally killing someone, in cases other than these where the owner's ox has been known to be vicious and therefore both ox and owner must be put to death. Exodus 21, 29. A ransom or restitution can be the sentence of the court upon the owner. Exodus 21.30 8. Other forms of punishment Leviticus 20.14 and 21.9 prescribe burning This may have been a cremation after execution. In Leviticus 21.9 it is for a priest's daughter who becomes a prostitute and thereby strikes at her father's office and in Leviticus 20.14 this death penalty applies to a case where a man commits incest with a wife and her mother. All three are to die. They are to be burned because even the bodies pollute the land. In Deuteronomy 25, 11 and 12, a woman who, when her husband is fighting with another man, seizes the other man's genitals to incapacitate him, is to have her hand cut off without compassion. These are unusual cases and are intended to stress the evilness of the offence. In Deuteronomy 21, 22 and 23, we are told that hanged men cannot remain hanging more than one day. 9. Lex Talionis, Exodus 21, 24 and 25, Deuteronomy 19, 21, Leviticus 24, 19 and 20, Numbers 35, 33. The eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot formula means that the punishment must fit the crime. The penalties for specific offences are routinely given. The Lex Taliona statements do not stipulate another kind of penalty, but simply sum up the premise of the law that, insofar as possible, restitution must be made or a comparable fine or penalty assessed. From the time of the Greeks to the present, misreadings of the Bible have been prevalent. The perspective of a Greek philosophy 
predisposed men to reduce everything to abstractions and often to read particular statements in their crudest sense. God is the ultimate person and power. He is not an abstraction, but the supreme being and totally personal. His revelation is therefore particular and personal, not abstract. For the Aristotelian and Platonic mind, the Bible is a crude book. For the biblically governed mind, the Greek philosophers are airy bubbleheads living in the clouds of their own foolish minds. Each to the other appears ridiculous, but the important question is not one of appearance, but of truth. If the God of the Bible is denied, there is nothing. Biblical law tells us that there are consequences to all human action, in time and in eternity, because there is an ultimate right and wrong, good and evil, there is a heaven and hell. The deterioration of justice in this world follows a denial of justice in the world to come. When man denies the validity of good and evil and the necessity for and the consequences of decisions, then he denies the reality of a future. The future is the consequence of the present. The goal of a static world the behaviorist or until goal of Marxists, socialists and status is a futureless world. The views of such a world envision no religion, no morality, no marriage and no meaning except the acceptance of self as God. To deny God's law is to replace it with man's law, the goal of which is to replace God's justice with man's changing status whims of tyranny. The purpose of God's law is our freedom under God, whereas the purpose of humanistic status laws is freedom from God, but slavery to the state. The insistence of humanism, as in the Humanist Manifesto 1 and 2, is freedom from God. But freedom from God is freedom from life and freedom. It is freedom for death to reign. To deny the validity of God's law is far worse than denying the validity of medicine and surgery were needed. The society which departs from God's law leaves behind health, healing and freedom for a license to sin and die. 10. Brutality to a bondservant or slave. Exodus 21-26 If a man angry at a servant struck a male or female servant in such a way that an eye or a tooth were destroyed, or comparable damage done, then the servants went free. If a foreigner, their slavery ended. If an Israelite bond servant, the rest of their service was cancelled. 11. The case of death by a goring ox. Exodus 21, 28-32 If the goring ox were not previously known to be dangerous, there was no guilt on the part of the owner. It was an accident. If the ox had a record of being dangerous, both the ox and the owner were to be killed. If the ox injures someone's servants, the compensation to the servant's master must be 30 shekels of silver for each offence. 12. If a thief invades a house at night, he can be killed without liability, but if he be killed without provocation in a daytime break-in, that is manslaughter. The thief must make full restitution, he shall be sold as a bondservant to make restitution. The restitution is to be at least double. Exodus 22, 1-4 13. Borrowed property. Exodus 22, 9-15 If a borrowed animal should die without known cause or be taken or driven away without the borrower's complicity, on an oath the borrower is declared innocent. Otherwise, double restitution follows. If negligence has led to theft, then restitution is required, otherwise not. If higher property is injured or broken and the owner is there as a part of the hire, there is no liability. If a wild animal has killed the borrowed animal, there is no liability. 14. Arson. Exodus 22.6. The penalty is restitution, whether the arson is accidental or malicious. 15. Killing a farm animal. Leviticus 24, 18 and 21. Restitution is required, beast for beast. 16. Removing landmarks. 
Deuteronomy 19.14, 27.17, Proverbs 23.10. Changing the location of landmarks was a form of stealing land. No penalty is cited, but it invokes God's strong condemnation and curse. 17. Hazardous pits. Exodus 21, 33 and 34. To leave an open pit wherein stray animals can fall is wrong. The owner of the pit shall pay for the dead animal, which then becomes his property for whatever value the hide can bring. 18. Fighting animals. Exodus 21, 35 and 36. If two animals fight and one kills the other, the survivor shall be sold and the proceeds shared for the equivalent amount paid to the owner of the dead animal. If the killer ox had been known to be dangerous and the owner had not kept him in, the owner of the aggressive ox shall pay the owner for the dead ox and take possession of it. 19. Criminal Trespass Exodus 22.5 Animal trespass could be accidental, a form of animal getting loose and entering another man's vineyard or fields, or deliberate, turned into the field to get free food. Restitution is mandatory. It should be apparent by now that in most offences restitution is the usual and normal penalty from double to fivefold usually. With restitution crime does not pay. The penalty is too great to risk. Since no prison system for punishment is a part of biblical law, this means that all serious crimes lead either to the execution of the offender or to restitution. This helps prevent the rise of a class of habitual criminals whose livelihood is crime. What God's law presupposes is that, were obeyed, only the people whose offences are the results of weakness rather than perversity are likely to survive. 